be cool for for the sake of this sprout team to see them go on i know maybe you don't feel that way since they have become a bit of your nemesis but uh we don't play them that much <laughs> to be honest i just like this narrative of the uh the the sprout nemesis for you uh you see the odds there the one x bet odds reflect kind of how we're feeling about this game as well i think that the fans feel much the same that this should be ensa's show but we'll see trap games happen not everything goes to expectation and sprout is certainly gonna have a good chance of it here on vertigo sphinx the man you want to look at the man you want to highlight he's gonna spot a few players and hightail it on out look and at the mid push chase look at the mid push down. so many Ooh. players down ladder if they get a good timing here it could be disastrous for Sprout. Three players. This is pretty wild, right? So now they're just going to try and hold them at bay. And Rawls even fakes the plant. That allows further time for these players to get up. Now they're in trouble. Slacks needs to do some damage. Needs to find something. He has taken the first. Looking for more with that P250. He's not got it. Max is playing talk here. Trying to buy the time. Well, he does have some time. He's got enough. Okay, Marix and Stare, the new additions to the team, pop off to net them the pistol. That setup was dangerous. They had to hold up in the back lines, and Merrix does just enough. Indeed, absolute carnage on the ramp, and it certainly felt like, as you pointed out, the moment Sprout started slowing down, surely they're going to get just completely sandwiched by all the Ents players. But ultimately, particularly when it went 4-4 four and 3-on-3, four and three three, it just felt like every Sprout player just hit every headshot. And sometimes, as it is in pistol rounds, that's the way it goes, and I'm sure Sprout will be happy to pick up that opening round here. Remember, folks, wise words from Coach Hender. Uh, just click heads, forehead. <laughs> Madden's got the first. Speaking of just clicking heads, I mean, it's a deco, right? What more do you want than to click heads? And we're back into another A ramp hit. The classic on Vertigo. How does Hades live? Madden! His third already with the deagle, the hand cannon popping off, but he's looking for more. They're desperate to get through this, but they're not getting anything. Sprout blanked so far, and the round will just leave Stare. And this one might be too much to ask. He can't even find the kill on Hades, who limps through with 2 HP. Stare in an impossible situation. Eventually, the salvaged AK will chase him on down the fourth kill in the round for Madden. And he's stolen that from Sprout. What is going on here early on? This is a game worthy of the night shift already. Yeah. Very apt that it's on at the uh, the late game time. Bit of a delay as well to push it a little bit later as well for good measure. And I'll tell you what, Mike, this is what happens on the desk. Nothing makes sense. Sprout winning the first round in an unlikely circumstances, <laughs> then straight after going up ramp, contacting in, and Madden finds three eagle headshots in a row. Couldn't have scripted it any better. And uh, this is nip and tuck here so far on Vertigo. And fans are rejoicing. And Sprout now seem like they want to test the ramp again, this time a little bit more of a spread with the Deagles in their own hands, right? This is sort of the, the trap it almost feels like teams get into of just, hey, can we take ramp? Okay, take ramp again. And again. And again. How do you feel about about Vertigo? You like a little more diversity in your play calling, or are you also a, uh, a ramp take stand? Ah, so interestingly enough, Ents is actually a team that we learn a lot from because mm -hmm. they are... A at least traditionally were a much heavier B and mid team than I'm sure you, especially casting NA to be honest, would be used to in terms of just endless AD faults and the ramp fights determining the round. But uh, when we're getting to this sort of level of competition, mid and B become so much more important. And you've got to remember yeah. if a team is loading up A early, then you need to do something somewhere else to pull them out of that, to condition them another way to make ramp more doable. So even though, um, yeah, to make ramp easier, you actually have to hit other areas on the map. And as we're seeing in this round, well, mid's going the way of the Ents, guys. Ooh, Deagle gets caught, though, through the grate. That's always a little bit tricky. Knife out through the smoke, maybe not the answer for Slacks. And, well, he'll meet his maker as a result, and that's going to be Sphinx. Super cool, calm, and collected to just rack up four kills in that round. No problem there. We have seen teams get a little bit weirder with it. Uh, I know Godsent in particular, who now you can debate whether they're an NI team since they've been competing in EU since really the beginning of the year, uh, have been getting a little spicy with, with a lot of those B takes in particular. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I'd say this is about as smooth of sailing as you can get to start things off for Ants, you know, beyond just winning the pistol and converting three. This is this is looking pretty dang good, and it glocks out with a single flashbang, so this should be a chance for perhaps Snappy to buff the stats. Would be good for the CT economy. Bit of a nade. Left side of the box doesn't do 
the world of damage, but the flash comes out. Plenty of players rolling up behind it. Player in towards uh, yellow in Madden. Finds two for his trouble. He's traded in the end. Snappy. Playing whack-a-mole there on the sandbags. Can't quite find the frags. Deagle out in play. Now he's connecting. There we go. Four alive. That's good for the money. We'll take that. And Ents, as you mentioned, getting the reset. Clean anti-eco's money in the bank. Now we're looking at Sprout saying, this is your map pick. We need to see something good here on the T side. Yeah, first real gun round. Let's see something convincing here. Just telling you right now, if this is an A-ramp take, I'm going to be very disappointed. I won't be mad. Just disappointed. Let's see what they do. Lots of options available to them, but I'm not liking the way of this early lean. I'm not liking it. Ah, they're going for it. All right. Ross is going to get forward. He's spreading alive, so he's giving up the audio cue. He's somehow going to get that kill. Madden maybe not interpreting the information correctly. Do they have a Molotov for the cement bags? They do, but Rawls has taken it into the side hallway, and that might not be accessible. So Snappy's position could be huge, especially if Hades can hold the line, which he does to perfection. And now no one's looking to clear him, so no problem for Snappy. So a trade does still ask some questions here. Not very good questions, but questions nonetheless. Hades, a nuisance, has to be cleared, and he's just going to be good for it. No problems, no issue. Leave him alone on site. Have all of his teammates die, and Hades just pivots like a turret to secure it. Looking good so far, Marix. No nades, just the AK in play, and has to be finding heads to make this doable. Gets the first, but nothing beyond that. Another round as well to mention about a bomb plant. They'll make the reinvestment more difficult for Sprout, and... For them, Rao's gained a lot of space. Early kill does get traded, but certainly Hades was the man of the hour. Playing right out mm -hmm. there, right out there, and Ivy was just having a field day, and he was locking down that position so well. You know, this is kind of beautifully setting up what we were talking about in the pregame, where it feels like each of their pieces is hitting really nicely, right? You've had your Spinks round, your Madden round, your Hades round. Now we just need a, a round from Diha and Snappy, and, and it'll be fine. Everybody gets a 4K. Everybody gets a multi-kill. Everyone gets to have some fun. Nade stack, and it takes Snappy out of play. Madden gets overwhelmed with one. Suddenly, this round's perhaps open. They want to go faster with it, and that might lend itself to what Spinks wants to do here. He's a monster once more. They haven't even gotten onto the site. They had all the momentum in, but Ents just immediately rotate and slow this right down. Bomb is still in hand, so have the opportunity to turn around and certainly make sense to at least stall this out and let Ents think twice, maybe double back. Stop loading so many numbers on A. He is indeed, but the bomb's still in towards A, so I'm yet to see the idea here. I guess Marix is just thinking, I'm low HP, I've got a rifle, I'll try and make a flank work, but unless he catches players off guard... Especially oh. now, this should be Ents' <laughs> round every day of the week as surely Hades is going to find this frag. There we go. Just Marix alone and uh, 4 HP and a drink. One. The thought at the second. Trying to go for the highlight real play. Not going to happen there. Sprout shot down. That round, they get the advantage, right? They get a, a two for one trade. That's everything you could possibly want to bully on towards the A site. But still, the rotations are just too quick. And Sphinx is there to slow them down so unfortunate for sure for sprout here and it feels like unfortunate for sprout might be the early story of this particular map as they're completely struggling to get a foothold baby at risk of earning his secret agent status trying to avoid that and once again the posturing isn't fully committed this time but stare is trying to work his way up the ramp risky business there on ramp He's going to face Hades very soon. That nade is good. Won't quite push the Orper out. It's Hades gets an opportunity, but it's such a hard shot to hit when he's playing up on the sandbags. Utility is good, though. That's going to isolate these Sprout players out of ramp. And the player we need to focus on is Spiddy, because he's found a great timing on mid, let alone the Ooh. boost on B as Marix finds an opening, taking space behind it, taking that duel with Spinks, and that felt like the pivotal moment. 3v4, and Spinks is all alone towards the B site right now. They're not going up yet. They might rotate back. Speedy's got his control. They still got options. A is completely vacant. I don't know if they read this though, but something is holding Sprout back. Something is holding them at bay. I think they were trying to work a boost up with Rawls, but with him not finding a kill, now they're floating off of it. 45 seconds. 
The problem is they've waited long enough that ENCE is just starting to spread, right? you got Snappy posted up with the AWP, so we'll see what the uh, veteran in-game leader can do with a Zoom Banger in his hands. But with two players now posturing towards the A site, this take is going to meet resistance. It's a little chance. That flashbang does give up the info a little bit, and a nade lets him know that he knows, that they know, what's going on here. Spitty's only got 19 seconds. Can he do something with this flank through mid? This would be the moment. If they drop the bomb, it could just be all over. Snappy connects, and they're trying to get the plant off, but they haven't forced it just yet. Rawls will find a kill, but he's been dropped seven seconds. Sphinx just has to live, and he knows it. And while Speedy will come hunting, he will not be able to find his prey. Nicely read there. Sprout run out of time, and they run out of lives. Looking a little bit dire. I think this would be a great time to start calling some pauses because it's been two or three rounds now, hasn't it, where Sprout have actually, early on, albeit briefly in a couple of them, had advantages. Mm. And then going later and later in the round, ends just seem so much more comfortable, whereas it's Sprout forcing the issue. Running out of time there, they could have been a bit more decisive with going back towards A, and that ultimately was the ultimate killer. The fourth player for Ents in that 3v4 was the time, and the ultimate deciding factor in Hades. Now he's got a good spawn. Now he's got the opening, and we love to see this player being dynamic. Stairs tried that a few times, right? Just get really fast up A ramp if he feels like he has the presence for it. And uh, more often than not, hasn't really worked out for them. I mean, obviously, the scoreline tells the story there. But they are going to be given the ramp space this time. It's a little bit more of a passive hold for Ents than what we've seen. No one out towards Cement. No one postured aggressively. They have a bit of utility to make life difficult for Madden. So he doesn't have to give up the spot. Now he can bring in reinforcements. Snappy likes this nade, doesn't he? Didn't Very specific do too much spot. <laughs> Only a little bit. Slack's peeking around. They've actually got so few nades here on the T side that they almost oh, have to play contact heavy right now. Flashes towards Tetris. That's going to push a player back. Madden falls immediately and suddenly... From a man deficit, this looks very doable. Bomb getting planted and a lot of control. This is Sprout's best chance for a long time. This is what they've been looking for. That kind of an opener, that kind of an entry. Time ticking away here. What's the util like? There's lots of smokes though is the problem. They're going to need to keep tight vision on that bomb. Because I'd imagine a defuse is going to start to come in right under their noses. Util flying out from the CT side. Someone can just get on that. D has fighting forward. He doesn't win his fight though are thinking about it and they have indeed do they realize Sphinx is on they do no problem there it's looking good for Sprout and Hades is going to beat a hasty retreat they've finally done it they finally cracked through a round for the first time since the pistol been quite the drought but something that has to be mentioned is even in losing the round Sprout have kept a lot of these close and look at the money now for Ents even after such a win streak of six rounds multiple players here are not going to be on perfect buys so this is just kind of the importance of kind of uh, continuing that economic damage and Sprout and have a great chance to play against lesser weaponry and utility and chain some rounds together in the hope of forcing Ecos down the line. Now that was kind of an interesting round, right? Because we saw Ants change things up. They get the initial pick and then they go much further back on the site than they have been holding. And that, that almost in invites Sprout in, would you say? But here's going to come the timeout for Sprout. This is where they call it to figure out things, to recognize the opportunity they have in this map. If you're talking to your team right here, Alan, right? You know you've just finally cracked through a round, and this next round is critical to giving you a chance to get into the game. What, what, are you, what are you telling them? So the first thing that happens a lot as a coach is you're the player, or the player, the person mainly tasked with tracking the economy. So the first thing you say to your players is, guys, their money is terrible. They have almost nothing in the bank, and even though the half hasn't gone great so far, if we break them here... We can still get up to, you know, five, six, maybe 70 rounds, which is very commendable on Vertigo. So that's the main mm. thing is just reassuring them that it has been a rocky start. We made some mistakes. But we've got a great chance now to break their money. And the work we have done on previous rounds, even in losing them to find the frags, should pay dividends. So just relax, guys. This, mat this round matters. And actually, something I've noticed with Sprout over the last few months is they love calling pauses in this situation. They recognize when the rounds are really important. And this one definitely is. That's Barry as well, their, uh, their coach. A very experienced player, coach, person in the scene. So, going to be calming that. Going to be settling them on in. Now we'll see if they can harvest the fruits of their labor. 
you know, harvest jokes, farm jokes, they all work better when it's sprout, right? <laughs> Anything that involves plants that are growing. Oh, they're finally going B. They're finally going B. They've got Merix up so far. The question is, can Diha shut them down? He eats that flash. I think Merix might have seen him as well. So now he's being hunted and Merix got that. Good use of the util, but Sphinx! Oh, Sphinx for his 12th kill. Just wants to deny any space. He can't do it. But he did slow them way down, allow the rotation to come through. The problem is, look at this. Someone's crept up a ramp. Stair is here. Finally, he's been allowed in. He's been trying to get through this position every possible round. And finally, he's got a chance. But he'd better get that flank going quick. Because he's losing teammates. And he's found this space. It's no longer a flank. It's the front. Spitty's rotating around to try and plant this bomb on A. Let's see if Stair can make the hero play. Before the moment ends, is still very much posturing for kind of a B retake. Soon they'll they realize they don't they're still yet. looking towards B. Oh, no. Oh, they now they know. It. Oh, this could cool. be disastrous with these advanced positions. This is so hard to clear out. Stairs position is huge. Madden's looking for it. They're clearly aware it's a possibility, and now they have a really good idea. They seem to read it in Madden. Just perfect on it. Here's the swing back in. His position's known, but he's able to slink away, and without the health for Madden, he's not confident to chase it. So now it's going to be the op that posts up. But is he looking the right way at the right time? He's certainly not. That's the round. That's the win. Hades can't do anything about this. He's just going to try and stick it, but Madden, Speedy should have the lineup. Oh, He's no. going for the knife. What's he doing? What's he doing? Oh, no. Thought he had time for the knife. Didn't at all. Hades will take the round and the no go taboo. What's going on? Why? What just happened? Why, Alan? Well, <laughs> I don't understand why he didn't just keep spamming. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Oh, no. That's a couple rounds now where Ents had no business winning them, and they've got him over the line, and for Sprouts, the only crumb of comfort is they, they get a bomb plant and they can reinvest, but how do you mentally reset from that? That was catastrophic. I feel like that's just one of those rounds as well where when you fluff it, you know every one of your teammates is just silently or vocally i don't know what they're like in their comms resenting you for it just a little bit right like you you brought that over the line it was winnable just just click just click both out one oh merrick's frustration perhaps but he's gonna try and bring this round through much the same but he's been out of this one so no chance for a late error here oh boy how do you how do you reset the mental after that alan could have taken another pause i guess um the main thing is for all of the other players to just be positive and just say, guys, forget about it. Let's move on. Even in yeah. a situation like that, which might be glaring that it was a mistake. But thus far in this round, three on three, only Snappy is on the bomb site right now. He's going to play in front of these smokes. So another chance here. Another decent opportunity. The cavalry has arrived behind. Coming up through Ivy. I'm going to take any contest at the moment. Snappy finds a nice position over default. Finds the first, and now these crossfires surely come into effect as Rowles and Stir are getting tagged up heavily. Bomb is planted, but how does this player get out of default? Stir is completely trapped. He is. No util either, so he's going to get chased in. Sphinx, a little bit of a blunder there. Maybe thought he had the kill. Tried to withdraw and wound up putting himself in the crossfire. So that's all in the hate. He's trying to clear this with an AWP. Oh, he's so focused in on stare. Does he realize the player's close at hand? Now he certainly does, and he's so quick. Can't chamber the next round in time. Gave himself a real chance at that one. But Rawls will take it away. The AWP as well. War Trophy brought into the next, and Sprout now have finally cracked the money. So they don't shake after that, uh, shall we say, blunder in the last. Instead, they win it. Now they got a prime opportunity to run up some rounds and make this a much more even scoreline. As you said... Investment is not good for Mentz, and their loss bonus is so low from winning so many rounds. They've decided there's no point here saving guys. The buy in the next is going to be pretty bad as well. Let's at least try and break Sprout's money, which, to be honest, is far from build up on their side either. So, for Sprout, clearly, weaponry, utility advantage here. They have to convert. And if they lose this one, Mike, it would be a disaster for their money as well. Certainly. Maybe a little bit timid. A little bit careful. They are going back to that ramp. A deep smoke, but an opt to peer over it could give some opportunities here. Eagle's trying to spam the line. Gotta be careful. Slax is here trying to spot somebody. 
Oh, and eventually he finds it. Recon mission successful. Snappy is his prize. Still a minute on the clock, plenty of time. But look at this. The player's starting to go down the ladder. Haven't seen this since the pistol, but Spinks. He does go down. Could be in a bit of a cheeky spot here. Can't connect can Hades. Now it's on Madden to try and take some jewels, and Rouse is having none of it. Five on two. Even if this flank pays massive dividends, surely there's no chances, and Slax is ready and waiting. Great game sense from him. Good communication, and Sprout's ready. Looking much revitalized after some troublesome rounds, and this is going to fully break the money events. The next has to be an eco and Sprout. On their way up to five rounds, a much more uh, commendable scoreline than how it looked early on. Yeah, downright agreeable at that point, right? Uh, but, uh... Oh, oh, gonna try for one. And he gets it. And now he's done. <laughs> Had to get the style <laughs> points. Had to repeat. <laughs> he was doing the math in his head for his future buy. And he's like, you know what? I need 300 more dollars. Let's go get it. Now, the real alpha play would be to die to bomb afterwards. Don't even I don't think he's that alpha. He's just going to save. Not that big a Chad for D, huh? Although, if you add a D to the end of his name, he is D Chad. D Chad. We should call him that if he gets like a big highlight, you know? Or just like <laughs> absolutely no fear runs in and kills loads of people. Then we say the D Chad is in the house, you know? The D Chad. Or the die chat, as, as you call them sometimes? Sometimes. Sometimes. That's a funky one because everyone on Endpoint calls him calls him Deitcher. So that's where it came from. Whereas everyone else calls him Deha. Except so. for Snappy, I noticed. When we did an interview with Snappy, he called him Deitcher too. So maybe I am like, right and you're wrong. That's but he saying. doesn't... Deha calls himself Deha, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. If I've been saying it wrong this entire time... I don't know. What are, it's like a Berenstein Bears situation, right? I think we need E6 to investigate this one. We need an independent please, body. Please, please do. I need to get to the bottom of this. What's the secrets? You know, he's someone you should ask for restaurant recommendations. He's a Katowice boy. Is he? There you yeah. go. Yeah, he's a native, we'll I get believe. Right into if the I'm DMs. not mistaken. Ask Slide in and ask him for his, his favorite food spot. He is a Counter-Strike player, though, so we don't know if he ever uh, went outside. Yeah, that's true. Even the talent doesn't go outside. We get straight in the shuttle to the broadcast <laughs> and then go right back to the uh, the PC room mm -hmm, mm -hmm. until 6 a.m. and then rinse and repeat. This is very important. There. Up close. Don't know that anything's really going to happen in this round with just the USPs. The USPs. Well, there's obviously no point in saving. So yeah. I expect at some point they're just going to all zerg out together. And at least try and find a frag. But uh, in terms of entertainment value, this round hasn't been terribly great so far. At least Rouse is trying to put on a show. Finds two. Traded in the end. But uh, at least that's something to uh, enjoy with the eyes. All right. Now here's the big question. Timeout comes out from Sprout. Because this is the round, right? This is the round. Are you going to go into the half with a nigh on even scoreline? Or are you going to open up the possibility for double digits, friends, once again? Only one way to find out, I guess. But uh, considering they got reset second round, this is already a pretty good half. Mm -hmm. so hard to get your economy back after that sort of situation. So, um, yeah. And the other aspect we've, of course, mentioned is that Sprout, there's probably been two or three rounds where they've been in good spots and haven't got it over the line. So, overall, it could have been a very strong half already for Sprout. So, so far, so good in terms of finding openings and getting themselves in good positions. Now we just need them to capitalize a little bit more consistently if they want to be uh, at least evening or maybe even winning the half from this point. Whoop, whoop, whoop. No dice. No dice for slack. Look at Spinks on the minimap. <laughs> He's already got a kill. He's already got a kill. He's already in your spawn. 
You wake up in the morning, Sphinx is waiting for you. Oh, but Marix is ready for that night terror. He's not scared. And now an advantage found for Sprout. So despite that nightmarish position to deal with, they have dealt with it. Indeed, and a chase in for Hades means that he will burn. Ents. Maybe throwing some good money after bad here as they were trying to just get that extra pick to bring it back to even scoreline. But now they got to be wary about the mid flank. And well, Diha is going to look for it. Merrick's rapping. Merrick's creeping. Could find the timing to catch him off guard because Diha has to watch B as well. This could be bad for Ents. And they won't get too many more opportunities if this goes against them. It's clear that Sprout are waiting for this play. To come through for Marix. There's only so long they can wait before they will have to execute. And they've got a hail of utility as well to make that happen. And now the kill triggers in the assault. Madden's new mission, survive. Live, get out of here. And he's even been spotted, so they know where he's at. So they should know they've got a site for free. And Marix will make sure they've got the map for free at that. A huge round to take for Sprout. This blows this whole half wide open. Look at these flicks from Marix. No doubting the individual skill. And as you were mentioning, it's just starting to feel a little bit scrappy for Ents, isn't it? Where potentially the individuals are feeling like, we need to get entry kills here. We need to open up rounds or it's going to be difficult later on up against Sprout. And how the tables have turned. And now we're looking at Sprout and saying, we're on track for a very good T side. It's going to be another eco for Ents now. Sprout, right back in this first map. I don't think we've had a lot of players from Luxembourg, have we? I couldn't name another. Yeah. I'm trying to see if there's like a list of... Nope, I don't think there's a way to find that. Players tagged with Luxembourg. Not quickly, at least. I'm trying to think. Merix, trendsetter. Groundbreaker. I will find out. Now I'm going to check the total population of Luxembourg. If you go on Liquipedia under Luxembourg, he's the only player listed. Well, there you go. It is only a population of 630,000 people in, as of 2020. So, like, half the population of Cyprus, which they're comparing it to. Just a bit more than Malta. So, not exactly a huge population to draw from for CS talent. But you think we might have had one other in the in the lifespan of the game. Yeah, and I guess if you think about the surrounding countries of the Netherlands, Belgium, France, and especially Germany, mm. throw all those into the mix and uh, a lot of talent. producing so many players. Maybe you'd expect a little bit more, but uh, I guess framing it from a different angle for their local scene, having a player like Marix now in a top team, a good organization, that's going to be doing a lot for some of the younger players to uh, actually have a player now to look up to. Absolutely. Now, if there are any other players from Luxembourg that we've overlooked, uh, go DM Alan Hender. Alan, what, what's your what's your is it Alan underscore Hender? Mm, yes, I'm always on, on the here? lookout for new players. So. Alan underscore Hender, and tell him why Endpoint should pick up the Luxembourg talent. We're actually going all Luxembourg soon. That's the move, <laughs> man. That's the move. I think that's the next wave. Untapped talent pool of the six hundred thousand people in Luxembourg. We're going to have a team of only people from Luxembourg and Liechtenstein. And maybe some from San Marino. Yo, so I would all watch an all Liechtenstein roster. I was, I was uh, like, weirdly fixated with Liechtenstein as a country when I was... Explain, like, explain. I don't know, like, 15 or something. I think I had to do a report on a country for a social studies class or something when I was, like, 14. And I chose Liechtenstein because I was a weird kid who wanted odd, unusual country situations uh and i wrote a report about Liechtenstein, and it's it's kind of a cool place you know to the principality of Liechtenstein. They, they've got a they've got a prince still or is he a duke i forget uh they've got a castle in vaduz and uh also their entirety of their security is is based on uh, the swiss military keeping them safe so but but it's also one of the only doubly landlocked countries i think it's that and Ooh, like uganda go. are the only ones uh, you don't get these sort the of facts on the A stream, like straight up. You don't this get is this what information. you need. He is a prince. He is a prince. For a while, you could rent the entire country of Liechtenstein. I on, heard uh, this Airbnb. as well. 
Yes, I heard this. You can like rent like, it for like a, a party, basically, can't you? Yeah, and I think it was like 70, 70,000 euros a night, though. Now, honestly, yeah, that sounds like a lot of money, but to rent a whole country, listen. Not that much pull... money. And like, I don't understand how that would work. Did they just, does everyone just stay home and they're like, yeah, you could do whatever you want in the streets. Like, just go ham. If you want to have the purge, just do it. Clean up, you know, make sure you don't have to pay the, the cleanup. What's the cleanup fee for a country, man, if you trash the place? Well, they've already got, you know, uh, state people to do it, haven't they? Surely they've got uh, municipal people already doing it. So yeah. You don't have to pay anyone new. You just get out the regular street cleaners. But I assume there's like, you know, like if you if you stain the sheets or something. You, oh, you get yes. The, of course. The You'd have to pay a deposit, I'm sure. Yeah. What's your deposit on a country, on a whole country? Well, we're back into the fun. We're back into the action. We'll find out what the deposit on a whole country is. Uh, in just a little bit. <laughs> tweet Imagine in those if you reviews. know the answer. <laughs> I, yeah, tweet tweet us if you know the answer. Oh, something's gone a little wonky on the mini map. We've now got two number eights. I assure you that Rawls is not playing twice. One of those players is in fact. Oh, I want to say it's Stare, but I'm not actually sure. Deegha gonna get a kill with just a five seven. Now he's got a rifle as well, and Haiti strikes. We saw these Deegs have big impact before. Ooh, Sprout may be getting a little nervous. Cooldown off the deck pause can sometimes catch teams off guard. And now Rawls does manage to bring back the numbers. So that's a good kill to find. Madden with only 7 HP. Of course, thinking way back to the second round, he was the hero, wasn't he, on the Deagle? 3k for him, 4 overall. When he picks up the AK, such low HP. Surely there's no opportunities. A lot of damage to Rawls looking the wrong way, but can't convert. And Sphinx is soon to follow. Just Dehar here remaining. Picks up an AK. Might even think about saving it. But actually Sprout chosen to really put the brakes on here. Slow and composed. I actually really like to see it. Dia never thinks about saving. Only glory. Only victory. Only putting himself in a very compromised position. And he's dead. Maybe should have thought about saving it. But they've got plenty of money going into the next round. So it wasn't the biggest concern. Wanted to try to pull off a hero play. And it is the last round. It's the final round of the half. Sprout, what a recovery from six one down they have rallied back to this point it is their map pick and now we're seeing very clearly why right they have uh they've managed to crack through and really once they crack through that defensive ends ends have been playing catch up ever since something we mentioned, more of a mustard the, crew. mentioned in the pregame didn't we that the kind of the big bonus here for sprout is gonna have a lot more options to drop into and their adaptations mm. have been great Specifically, I think mid round and late round, they look so much more composed for me than they did earlier on. Another heavy nade onto Snappy and Madden. Timing's brilliant to come through the smoke. He finds two for his hard work and ends back in the man advantage. And they do need to win the half, considering how far they were up earlier on. That nade's gonna be chunky. Oh, it does. Kobe. Diha, though, gets killed in the exact same moment, so that's fine. They dealt with Max, who has been the lurker so far. Now it's just going to be Spitty and Slacks to try and make things happen. They'll group up. They'll play the buddy system. And there's just one player isolated on site, so if they could find this kill on Sphinx, it would open things up. But that's a big ask. And now they got confirmation that there's at least one player here out towards the ramp. Reinforcements might float on through. Hearing this spam, trying to get lucky. This is definitely going to call Ents back over. You can see the rotation going on here. Deha now responsible for mid. The op coming over to focus on in. And now with 35 seconds, they are reading the full commit. And a full commit, it is indeed. Big kill for Spitty. Might open up the bomb plant. They need that. And he's going to tuck into the corner and just try and get this done. The spam's not on. Oh, Deha right over his shoulders. He'll get him, but the bomb's already been planted. The damage has been done, and now Slax has a chance to win this. Slax, his comrade, just taking a gentle nap against the cement bags next to him, and he'll join him. Just a little bit of a slumber. It was actually his enemy taking it out, you know, tucked on in. But it's going to be a defuse on, and Ents will take a slim lead headed into the second half. We will be back after this quick break. All right, 
So it's a slim lead in this match, but most importantly, Alan, I've looked up more details about renting the entirety mm -hmm. of Liechtenstein. Apparently, you can't do it anymore, I don't think. I think this was uh, this was a, a little ways back. I think they've stopped it. But at the time, you could have renamed the streets and printed your own currency as part of it. Introduced your own currency into the Principality of Liechtenstein for a few days for the lols. That's pretty wild. I was looking forward to using the mic pound, but... Unfortunately, oh, you were too late. You were too late getting into Lichtenstein, and I guess getting into the actual action here. Look at this B split coming out from Ents. There's only one player in defense, and it's Marix here in towards CT, and he nails free to the wall when he had no teammates to help. What a monster hold from the uh, Luxembourg player. He drops the bomb as well. So even though D has putting in work now. It's still going to be a gargantuan task to actually get back around towards this parcel of C4, and he needs Spinks to make some noise to draw them back off, but they're going to come hunting in. Oh, pinching in towards mid. Rawls has been spotted. Rawls lives. Shouldn't have. But Rawls going down means it's Spinks. Rawls now pulls this off. A 3k back in turn. Merrick's work wasn't enough. Spinks pulls in another nutty pistol round. What is going on? What, what is happened? going on in this game? Dude, Sphinx... Okay, so Sphinx has 18 kills. He actually, I believe, paces the server. He does pace the server. But here's the thing. Seven of those are from two pistol rounds. A deagle round, and then the second half pistol, which is wild. Just so unreasonable. So unreasonable. It's so many times in that round, it was like... No way Sprout can win this. They're getting B-split one player here. Marix isn't even on the bomb site. He gets three kills. How can Sprout lose it? And then... Things as you're saying. What a recovery, and he, of course, was the man we highlighted coming into the series. We were saying as well, even if this is going to be a bit of a blowout, we want to see Spinks in form, and he is delivering. What a pistol round from him. Yo, poor Merrix, though. Gets so much damage in that, and then uses that money to drop stare at M4, as I assume how this one worked out, and just gets stuck with the Deagle no armor himself. Sacrificing for the squad. Stare gonna get aggressive here. He was aggressive for the first half on this ramp position. Something gives him away. Stare, I don't know what, what it was. The gun barrel sticking through the smoke. Something gave him away. And now he's a dead man. That rifle's not retrievable. They're gonna overwhelm. That was their one big gun. And Speedy is next on the chopping block. Slacks will keep him alive, but the nose goes with the scout. Not gonna last too long. Somehow he escapes. His teammate laying down his life to get him out of there. They've kept the numbers even as well. It's a little spicy in this round. This is far from a secure end run. Merrix. Gotta do this ball something magnificent once more, but for now it'll be Rouse. Drops the bomb. Gets things wild, gets things weird. Merrix on the edge of the smoke. Can he pop through? Can he make the hero play? He's gonna have to. No armor, 20 seconds. He just needs to deny the bomb plant. But he can do no such thing. The bomb is down and he's a dead man. It's expensive. It's messy. It's a massacre. But once again, Spinks steps up for the squad. Marix was so close to pulling that off. If he just mm. is, you know, millimeters closer with that flick at the end, such low HP was the remaining ends player and he really could have done it. And that would have been the reset themselves. Exactly what happened in the first half. But Entz just about get it over the line. They need to keep this round clean to try and at least build up a little bit of economy, but that's been the story of this map so far. So many close situations, so many situations where you feel like the other team has no opportunities, and then out of nowhere, some individual brilliance pays dividends and uh, might be a step too far to expect the same, I think, on this round. Poor Sprout. I've had to do it the hard way in both halves, right? This time, at least, they don't just get pistol reset, but they lose the pistol round to begin with. And so they're going to, again, have to swallow the bitter pill through this round. Likely give it up. Maybe try and catch a gun here on one of the peripheries, but they're working uh, from a deficit at the beginning of each half, and that is such a nightmare position to be in. Madden. He's had his stats with two more. Clean stuff, four alive. Needed to be uh, a nice clean round for Mentz after what was mm. 
a very close anti-force buy in the second round but this is what we're here for rifles in play big green on slacks of course he was the other player highlighted coming in and given how well Spinks is playing so far it's not been a bad map by any uh, any stretch of the imagination yet for no. slacks but we would like to see him having great impacts here on ct if sprout are going to close the gap yeah this is where you should see him take over if he's going to do so now you've got two map tenths into this round right you got limitations in the weaponry where do you hit the gas here, Alan? Where do you go spicy? Rawls is certainly trying to get spicy. Trying to get aggressive. And he will keep them off of the A-ramp, at least for the time being. Potential for a fast flank in there. And right now, they're taking inroads towards B, so life could get very tough for Merricks in a moment. He's impressed so far. Seems like he may need to do so again. All the nades going into this B-lobby position. That's going to stall out Ents a little. Sprout now starting to make the reads. Look at the minimap. They're just going to leave Rouse aggressively on the kind of left side of yellow up close. Two on B, two in mid, close on the rotates. And by the time this hits comes in, there's going to be so many players in defense. How do you, do you deal with all these positions? Two stuck behind default. That's really awkward. Uh -oh. And that's going to cause huge problems. Fortunately, though, as you we were saying, the cavalry is here just in time. And now crossing these lines becomes impossible for these sprout players they're rotating off they're rotating off oh and rawls is in the back line so this is gonna get weird right because sphinx has found some space in towards mid but if rawls can be circumvented or shot in the face a might be open but that's not gonna happen snappy wasn't expecting the player to be that deep and now with only 24 seconds how does Spink even get into a position where he can affect this round in time don't know that he can, so he's going to press forward and try and find the kills. And now his position's been spotted, so information given up means that he's going to try and do some economic damage. Can win the round. Can make their economy a bit of a nightmare. And steal an op as he slip away. All things considered, if you're Ents, this is the sort of round you want to be losing. Saving an AWP over, doing so much damage to that CT economy, and now you have a good opportunity to reset this again, like we saw in the first half, is another round where Sprouts, it's so important they don't get broken here. Otherwise, it's going to come so hard on the CT side. And I think Ents are recognizing the position financially. They're this time taking the tack pause and they're discussing what strategy is going to come into play because they know if they break the bank here as Sprouts, they're in touching distance of picking up their opponent's map pick. Time out elapsed. Time to dive back in. Rouse is a bit of an ADR monster right now. Only 15 kills, but 143 ADR. Life of the aggro player, right? I wonder if that's a bit of a bug. That seems I choose absurdly to believe it's real. high. But if I that is correct, it's real. If it if that is correct, that is uh that's pretty wild. And it must mean he's got a lot of assists as well for good measure. I'm going in to double check. No, it's uh, it's a bug. You got uh, me hyped my dreams. Nothing. He's apparently got about 80 ADR, 79.4. Sounds more realistic. And even then, that's still a pretty good number to be putting up, considering how what a kind of brutal road that first half was. Yeah. Madden's number is accurate though, 121 ADR, pretty beastly. Yeah, looking good. And of course, you remember at Katowice, we're having all these conversations still about maybe it's still too early, maybe still transitioning into these roles. But it feels like in the series here at uh, at Pro League, as well as I think maybe the very end of Katowice, it just feels mm -hmm. like now he's really growing into the roles, doesn't he? I, and I think the interesting thing for me about Madden is I, I, I had the chance at Kato and also at uh, in Stockholm uh, for Challenger to talk to people who knew Madden, right? A Devil Walk uh, had recently coached him on FBX, and uh, Kassad has uh, known him for a while and played and played with him. And they were both just very impressed and both supremely confident that he was going to have early impact for the Sense squad. So, in my experience, when the people who know a player are just like, it don't even, it's not even a question for them whether the player is going to be able to perform. That's such a good sign uh, for a team. It's, it's always an interesting one. It's just sort of the 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 perspective that you get when. Uh, you know from different insular scenes really 
or where maybe you don't have contact with the player beforehand, but you find out the inside scoop on them and you can get excited. Yes, indeed. And of course, another player from, um, needless to say, a bit of a lesser known region and uh, country of origin in terms of, you know, Counter-Strike heritage. And again, a bit like Stir, I guess. It's good to see these players. We like as much diversity as possible, don't we, in terms of regionality and we do. In terms of even in terms of a broadcast, it just makes it so much easier to be compelling and take different angles. So it's nice to see. And I guess an aspect we brought up earlier on in terms of events was how now they've got so much skill across the board. In this game so far, Snappy and Dehar both have been a little bit under the weather. But because you've got players like Madden and Sphinx and Hades to pick up the slack, you don't necessarily notice it as much and then are still reasonably comfortably in the lead here. Yeah, and Diha had that lovely task of being the B anchor over on the on the first half, which is always fun. He's um, still the B player, I believe, on T side, so it's not going to get a lot easier in terms of yeah. finding 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 the cheap frags. All right, here we go. Hades looking for an opener. Are they going to give him some aggression? He's begging for it. Aching for it. Take the peek. Come around the crane. Let me raise you one up into the heavens. A lot of utility to devote early on to try and prevent them from coming through, but Madden says, I don't care. I want to come through anyway. Uh, spam battle getting a little bit hairy. So take over the toes for Madden. All those bullets downrange. And the end result is only 24 points of damage on the one player. And a little bit more now. Hades. Give him a sliver an opportunity, but no great chances. Sprout can make heavy numbers here on towards A to try and get this ramp control. And maybe Ents are making a brilliant read to go back towards B. It's much lesser defended, and if Sprout don't rotate in time, it could be problematic. And Hades as well finds another frag. It's really tough here from Sprout to know where to put your numbers. Mm-hmm. Don't have the vision yet, but it is going to be an A-ramp take, and Ross wants that vision. Goes for the info hop. But he hasn't seen enough to draw anyone back, right? So he's just going to post up, just going to lock himself in towards cement, and there is still a Molotov on Spinks, so life could get very difficult. No smoke anywhere close enough to throw it. If they commit this molly, he's dead. Someone's got to be watching it, though. Someone's got to be watching it. He's burning. He's ticking. They're not looking. Turns into one. That could have been way worse. And the commotion of the sight take. No one was focused long enough, and he... Oh, just enough time. It's going to get spicy. D hit down on the dirt. Damage coming back the other way. They're trying to deal with the planter. They can't. A bit of a blunder there, perhaps, but Stare. Still bring it in favor. Sphinx, he's been incredible so far this map. 24 kills already to his name. He needs two more. They're going to hop on that bomb eventually. They've got no smoke to cover it off, so they want to come and clear him. He's trying to realize that no one's home, and he's got the read. He's got the read. He's got the instinct. He's got the shot, and the second as well. He's just so damn Good. Another huge multi-kill. Another clutch for Sphinx as he continues to keep Ents chugging along in this second half. There is no besting Sphinx right now. He's just on a different level, seemingly to almost anybody else on the server. And another situation where Ents are in a tough, tough place, losing numbers, losing out a lot in that spam battle through the smokes. Sphinx left alone, as you said. Game sense is brilliant. Knows to check Ivy. And it's looking exactly in the right place at the right time. And it's Sprout back on the pistols. How many times have we seen their economy broken during this map so far? And is this one time too many? All right, so why Ivy? It's just because of train, right? Um, There's no Ivy here. I think probably what? because of train. Some people say short. Some people say gap. Gap is the FPL name. Mm. Um, that's from the old version of Vertigo before. Or, but I guess we should probably focus on this round as it should have been a slam dunk is now a 3v5. Yeah, a little little deagle justice perhaps for Sprout. Uh-oh, uh-oh, they may have gotten a little bit cheeky with this. Hades finds the first and that all up convinces them to maybe duck back. Still, chance for this to get very spicy indeed. No flank just yet. Ants have pounded the break, mashed them on in. That is not a kill somehow. Well, to make my life uncomfortable. Hayes is really trying to get the shooting gallery here, and eventually he'll start to connect on these targets. 
If this is a carnival game, Hades is trying to win the giant stuff fair, and so far, he's looking good for it. But Stare might be walking home with a grand prize here. He doesn't want the bear. He wants that game console that's somehow been at the top for two years, and you're not sure it's even possible to win it. He's trying to bring it through. He's trying to risk everything into it. And ends with the bomb down. This becomes a much easier task for them, but Stare's got another spot. They know a player's here. D has got the lineup, but it comes down to the 1v1. Hades and Stare. The Deagle. No longer needed. The AK comes out. The rifle here and Hades swaps to the gun first. Another clutch goes the way of ends. That one got way closer than it ever should have. And Sprout, well, it might have a chance now. Yeah, good recovery though. It has to be said for Ents. 3v5. That was on a knife edge for yeah. a few seconds. And actually, Hades, I think he was full white there at the end. That was a complete... You know, click down, spray, and pray. And this is saying another clutch going the way of Ents. You create your luck in CS, and they've created a lot of it so far. And Sprout, now they've got to start chaining gun rounds together, or this map will be slipping away from them. quiet through the beginning silence on the server Let's probably know how much this round means need to get something going here has to be done and the threat's gonna come towards B it's Marex as well the young gun new guy on but slack strikes first all right there we go wins out the op duel this time around best Hades the man who clutched last time a nice scalp to find early on and with only 45 seconds going on ends have tried to be so very patient here but it might come back to bite them i've been making some inroads towards a but slack still lurks he's still a threat he's still a sentinel but he has been left a little bit on his lonesome there's a player out towards cement to provide him some cover fire and as they keep trying to pick up that op they don't expect slacks to have just stuck around after the smoke fade huge kill to find madden to make some noise here and he's gonna do so did he spot the second player Apparently not. Molotov down, but he catches bullets in the face instead. And they're not looking at Cement. Stairs got one. Most of the second as well. All on the snappy. And with 10 seconds, he'll just bail away and keep the AWP alive. Good stuff from Sprout. Good defense and slacks. Most of the time, you'll see him towards mid. And I think it caught Ents of guard in playing that ramp position late mm. on. Finds a couple of nice kills. Good crossfire as well with his teammate holding that yellow swing. So nice stuff from Sprout, and what we're seeing now is the result of so many of those rounds going close. One-on-ones, two-on-twos. Look at the cash here for Ents. This is very close to being an even game, and Sprout just needs to clean up against what is two rifles and orb and some, and some pistols. Look at the nades here for Ents. Three grenades total. This is yeah. Sprout's best chance yet to close this up. We saw the same kind of thing happen in the first half, right? Where even after that 6-1, and one, the money dribbled away very quickly for Ants because they just couldn't keep rounds clean. Well, it's coming back to bite them again. Some of those losses to the pistols, really an issue here. They're going to come in towards B. A player aggressive. Oh, the gun model blocked it, but Spinning saves Madden's life. That could have been bad. That could have been real bad. Instead, Speedy now has pressure on. It's been a rough map for him. He's going to get one. Some damage onto the rest, but he just found the unarmored player. It's not a big find yet. He had just had a deagle. They were ready for that fight. He was a sacrificial lamb, if you will. And now the pressure's here. Spinks, a huge kill to find. All in the slacks and stairs. Stare done it with the HE, and it's come back to even numbers. Slacks trying to hold the line. They've got the read. There's still time here for Ents. They can rotate if they want to, and Snappy does indeed, but he will be heard through the floor. Stare is reading this all the way and is starting to float over, but it's a fake. It's a fake. He just wanted to draw them through, and it's worked beautifully. Spinks coming back in. Now Snappy comes through. The savvy vet has drawn them completely off the site. Now Spinks is the corner. Now Spinks is the angle. He has so much real estate, and they're not even looking for him yet. There's a freebie, and he'll back away. Brings the advantage back over. Puts the pressure on the Slacks to pull off this clutch. And with that bomb now down, Slacks now locked on out. And their money's still brittle. This is such a tough task. 
He's going to come around. He's going to get spotted. And he's down for the count. Snappy only gets one kill in that round, but his rotation wins it all. Yeah, for sure. And the kind of angle we need to take on that is that he's enabling the player like Spinks to take the space. He's enabling a player like Spinks, who's by far the best on the server right now, to be mm. activated in that late round position and then work up and then, you know, use his good game sense and mechanics to help close it out and it just feels like sprouts honestly when they watch this demo back they'll see these rounds and be thinking we were so close to actually having a clean victory here over Ents. we lose the second round in the first half we have some really dicey one-on-ones and another one here a force by from Ents to get over the line and Ents, it just feels like they're winning all the unlikely rounds here they're all yeah. going their way and surely Spinks is a huge part of that massive He's the chili pepper that makes their stew spicy. Exactly. All right, Alan. If you could rent any country for a day. Oh, here we go. <laughs> we'll save it for the break. We'll save it for the break. This round's critical. This round's hugely important. They bet everything on it, Sprout have. They've gone all the way in. It's very limited, to say the least. No op out. Two famuses. Famai. For Mooses. Can Rawls hold the line here? He can for the first. Looking for more. Damage done. But he was a goner still. He's taken out the titan of the game so far. He's taken out Sphinx. The late round monster. The clutch god. The multi-kill machine is down for the count. But, you know, they've got a few monsters waiting in reserve. And Madden might just be one of those. Advantage found for Ents. And now they're going to let some time whittle off the clock and see... If applying the pressure gives them more, it does indeed. Slack's trying to chase that one in. Leaves everything on to Merrick's and Spitty. Merrick's is position known. He's done damage for sure, but damage is not a kill. No, pressured up. He's going to back away. So tough here for Sprout. Pick your poison in terms of where these players position. Do you group together? Try and force something out one of the bomb sites. Spitty's trying to get information on A. He's not in the right place. Marix finds one, but that's information enough. Now these players can scale up on the bomb site. Bomb is beginning to get planted, and look how kind of their eyes are trained on this window area. Tough retake, but there is some utility, and Sprout needs to place it perfectly to have an opportunity here. They're going to save. Really? Off. Yeah, they're going to play for overtime. I mean, they have nothing if they lose this, right? But... They're going to put their faith in winning six rounds in a row in a game that's frankly been pretty bleak for them. So that's feels like a bold gamble here, Alan. Yeah, maybe if they knew how low d -Hub was, they might commit to the retake, but they've gone for the more cautious approach. It's going to be Ents up to 15. And as a reminder, this is Sprout's map pick. So in terms of the series overall, it's going to be pretty dire straights. They can't at least get this to overtime. Ents, pole position now. To close this out. One more round. One more round. And they snatch away their opponent's map pick. And we head on to Mirage. Comfortable map for Ents. We talked about it. For Sprout, it did feel like Vertigo had to be it. If we were going to get to Ancient. If we got to Ancient, it was going to be kind of interesting. But. Now for Sprout, that's a distant thought. They need six rounds here. Dream dreams of Ancient. Madden will try. Open things up towards the ramp. Finding the space, finding the suppression. They've already got that presence towards mid, and Madden's gotten so much room out here in the scaffolding. They seem to be aware he could be here, and he reveals his presence and just wants to slip away. That's a win, I'd say, for Sprout, because that position could have been bad. Chasing him out of it. Putting him on notice slows in, at least for the moment. A lot of utility expended by both teams so far contesting this position. There's four at the bottom of the ramp here. And surely if they swing out, some good trades can be found. They're hitting good shots. Spitty doing work from the, from the top of the construction, that yellow area. And Sprout's handed a lifeline here. Four on three. Got to convert this. Kit just rolling down the hill. End over end. Let's see if Spitty can send any bodies down after it. He's got one, not the second. He'll take a tumble off a skyscraper, but Stair should have a strong spot here. A teammate as well. He just needs to hit this first. He flinches at the last possible moment. 
Fox on the way, delays that engagement for another day. A flashback through, but he's being given nothing. Nerf definitely showing here, but he's still going to get the best of Madden. It all falls to Sphinx. But if there was anyone in this server who could pull off this round, it's this man right here. He's got 20 seconds. 20 seconds to pull it off. The bomb on his belt. Two players to find. He's clearing his corners. He's made a footstep. Marix hears him. The Molotov will slow him in backing on off. Marix is perfectly positioned to catch. That's going to be 10 rounds found for Sprout. They live to fight another day here, Alan. Still alive. And Ends making a bold call here. We're going to reinvest. We're going to buy up. Bit of a force buy. They, have the they certainly have the option here to save one and get a better buy in the next. But they've said, we have no interest in letting this map get any closer. Two AKs in play. Utility is decent, but a little bit lacking. Especially towards the Molotov. So, potentially this will influence the call. And it looks like mid is going to be on the cards. Why do I feel like this is the round where Snappy just pulls off four kills for some reason? I just have this feeling. Now, if he gets boosted up here and his head ripped, that might make it worse. But Spitty has moved off his angle, his initial read. Now the player's going to come up. Snappy's going to try an entry. Okay, not getting the Snappy 4K, but he does set up the actual kill. Trading himself on out there is fine. He did have a lot of utility, though, if I'm not mistaken. So that's a big loss here for Ents. Try and clear on through, but it's a massacre in mid. The bomb is down. The round might just be over. Diha with a tech nine and three players fully armored up on the other side means that these bullets are going to have to do a whole lot of headshotting. And he's going to find a way back into this. Time for the Diha spicy round. It would be great. That's what we want to see. It'd be nice if he could recover a better weapon. He's scouting around forward. M4 Ooh. in play now, so. 17 bullets. Plenty. Any chance. Finds the first. Stair swings. Guess the dink. The good try from Dihar. Too many That's players ultimately to deal with. If that was an AK. Yeah, yeah. What could have been? What could have been? Alright, so the run back now. An eco out for, for Ants. And that means that we have time. For me to ask you, what country you would rent if you could rent one country for a day? Oh, I need to think about this. I need to think about this. What would be... Mm. I need to kind of, you know, narrow the options. So, I'm quite peckish to warm climate. Okay, okay. Tropical. If you right. have that when you grow up in, in, in the UK. <laughs> Don't yeah. want it always to be grey. So, maybe some sun. Some beaches would be good. So, we're All looking right. in, the, in the, the... Maybe the tropics or... I think it's got to be in the Caribbean, you know, Mike. It's got to be in the Caribbean. Okay. All right. It'd be a, it'd be a small enough country to be manageable as well. Mm, being British, it also probably needs to be somewhere where they speak English, just so. Okay. <laughs> you just, I've got just some ideas works. for you. Just how it works. I'm thinking the Bahamas could be a good choice. Barbados, mm -hmm. maybe even better. But I think I'm going to go with Jamaica. Get my reggae okay. on. Okay. Okay. If you wanted a little less heat as well, Bermuda is a good option. Mm. Not quite as tropical. See, now, okay, our producers just brought up the Bermuda Triangle. Here's the thing about the Bermuda Triangle. Bermuda is not in the Bermuda Triangle. It's a area of sea between Bermuda and the Caribbean and another point across the ocean, I think. And the thing that's weird about the Bermuda Triangle, the reason why so many ships went missing there is because it's really dang big and there's nothing in it. So if you have an issue on your boat and you're halfway through the Bermuda Triangle, ain't no help coming, you're going to die. And no one's ever going to hear from you. So you're telling me we shouldn't boat the players in for SO1 Bermuda? No. No, no, no. Well, I, I mean, boats have gotten a lot better. Since the shouldn't days of sail them in on uh, 18th century rep replica boats. I mean, you can. You just have to choose your angle. If you go from the U.S., uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty fun. I've actually done the sail. Pretty good one from the Chesapeake Bay, from Annapolis. Pretty cool. See, we're learning all these things about you, Mike. That we never would have sailing other, trip. otherwise. You know? Stair is learning that he can get a nice opening kill on Madden as well, and this round is now critical. So we're focusing back in here. I'm ending my complete derailing of this conversation for now. That nade doesn't do what it's supposed to, but it does set up Sphinx. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Sphinx ready to kill everybody again. 
here he goes killing again 33 kills already found and he would love to just close this out with the kill. there's a freebie now they know he's here uh, the molotov is gonna slow them down they can't go they can't go through spitty finds a kill elsewhere but this bomb's going down and a three on four is a very manageable situation especially with spink still alive if this man's up anything is possible for ants that's what they're truly going to be believing is that clock does tick away there are kits available so a retake is viable there's bit of utility as well to work with but snap is going to try and shut it down early and he may have just been trying to set up spings one all he finds but deha holds the line and now slack just needs to get that smoke down and that defuse on Drop it, but he's gonna try and go for the shot and he's got it as well just enough time for the defuse nicely done here it comes down to the wire but sprout hang on getting real close now and you've got to harken back to some of those early rounds if sprouts pull off those one-on-ones if they don't get reset earlier on in that first half it could be all she wrote already but they're just fighting for overtime as ents they're going to pause, talk about the investment here. It's going to be more of a half by a bit of a hero AK on the man of the hour and Spinks. And if you're Spinks and you've got 35 kills, got to be looking at your teammates and saying, guys, we have to close this Adam regulation. I'm not sure if I can maintain this form. The Sprouts are making this a very compelling affair. Set to go into round 29 here on the first map here in ESL Pro League. What a rally. What a rally from Sprout. Fair bit's been committed into this round as well. Out oh, from Ents, right? Fair bit of investment. They're comfortable with their loss bonus at this point. They're comfortable with the possibility of a bomb plant as well. Give themselves a real chance to win this round. Look at that early Hucket util. And, oh, this could be fast towards ramp. This could be very fast indeed. Smokes are up. And at least for the moment, it's really just stare. It's just stare. They're not going to realize how close they came to having that site ripped open and available. Because that was just a bit of a fake. And now an exchange in towards mid means this is messy. Slacks hangs on. The off chiming in a Molotov to make his life a little bit more comfortable. As they're going to have to retrieve that bomb. And into the fray they go. Slack striking again. His 29th kill found. We highlighted him in the pre-show. And now he's stepping up to deliver. Tech 9. Flashbang. And a dream. Players swarming over the bomb as well. And that AK that was on Spinks, that's all the way back towards the T side of mid. There's no chance of recovering that. For Dihar here, no point in saving. The loss bonus is well beyond the uh, investment you're carrying right now. So, need to get in there. Run in with your knife if you have to and just get rid of these. Need to die before the time runs out. But he's taking his time. Real slow. Now going to peek in. Stirs there. Finally ends the misery. As we're going into round 30, Mike. And how many times yeah. in this map have we looked at the scoreline and said, Sprouts have made this so hard for themselves. And on the first half, they clawed it back. And it's happening exactly the same on the second. Bit of deja vu here on the C stream. As we're going the full distance in map one. Majorly. Majorly. I can't believe it's gotten this close. Sphinx has dropped 35 kills. In regulation so far. There's a Krieg out for Hades now. No op available, so we'll go for the lesser scope. That could make things interesting. Make things a bit weird. Lots of early utility dump for Sprout. Look at how few nades they have left over, actually. Spitty and Rawl is basically getting rid of their kit. Unless they've dumped those nades somewhere for safekeeping. Good news is they have got a, a ramp control, so the nades have, in that respect, paid dividends. Mm. Looking at the minimap, it's all about mid here for Sprout. Two players in attendance. Slack's posted up and now Rouse is saying, we haven't seen anybody. I'm going to bolster this B defense. Creed taking some shots. Has a great chance for Hades, but can't connect. As it's still all square here. Until Stir punches in the first frag. Man advantage for Sprout. Can they get it to overtime? Oh, Merrick holds the line. See the big impact of not having the AWP. Hades wasn't able to get through that kill, and now it's turning into a bit of a massacre. It's all under Spinks. Oh, Spinks! Can he do it again? 37 found bomb retrieved, but he can't cross. Spitty ready for him. Posted up on the pixel angle, and we're going to overtime. We're getting more, folks, after this quick break.
Too much excitement in this game to end in regulation. Despite the best efforts of Spinks, 37 kills through 30 rounds. Uh, we're getting a little bit more. We're getting some overtime. And it's it's a big part up to uh, Slocks that we've gotten here. 30 kills of his own. He's caught up. Uh, not quite all the way, but in a big way. He'll have to start the party again. Is that all ping? The CT side, we highlighted it. We said he'd need to be a big piece. And has indeed. Stair wants to get aggressive through the smoke. Trying to get flashed through, and he gets stuck into a bit of an angle, but he's caught on Madden, and Madden will realize what's happening first. So kissing in the smoke, the bullets are soon to follow, and ends now an advantage, something they were craving for just so many rounds of regulation. Look at Madden taking the space as well. Creeping up, Rouse seems to be aware, but if he picks a nice timing to peek out, Slacks as well is so low, another Molotov is going to land, he has to face next to Fool, and now Rouse is in a unenviable position is getting pinched in two directions the flash is reasonably good but marix is even better finds two trying to fall back while well, kissing in the smoke mike what's going on free one just uh figured out the solution to accuracy right you can't miss if your gun barrel is touching exactly. your opponent's head never he'll never miss again i mean that one he decided to get a little risky long range shot you know uh, but that's going to be a big round for Madden to deliver them uh, 16. They finally get the 16th round. This is the classic, right? You, you you let the comeback happen, and then as soon as you hit overtime, you're like, oh, that's how we win a T-side round. It's all coming back to me. I'm remembering. And I guess something to point out is that, of course, Spinks is the absolute standout here. But mm. Madden, who potentially hasn't got all the good roles... He's still putting up a very commendable performance, and it's always that kind of sidekick when required here for Ents and finding another terrorist round. In uh, a little bit hard to come by at the end of regulation. So that can really cheer them up. And Deha, is that a quiet map? There was nothing quiet about that shot. Not at all. Ryan thought he might have been gifted the space again here. Not quite this time. But it's seeming like this might just come towards B, and that means that Marix is going to have to impress us once more. He's done a lot of it. I will give a massive credit to Marix. This map in particular, he has been shining when called upon. His numbers maybe aren't as bonkers as some of the other players on the scoreboard, but he's been playing the role of the anchor, and he's been playing it to perfection. So now they're coming on up. They're coming on in, and he has unfortunately given up the space right as they're trying to come through. But he'll still find his pound of flesh, winning out the duel against d -Ho once again. That has been a nightmare matchup for Deha and Marix is still enforcing his will on the site through the use of utility. And while well, the numbers have been even, what can Spinks do here? In the he can get a freebie. He's lost a teammate in the same token, and they don't have that bomb down yet, so Spinks is going to have to come up huge again. Only 40 seconds. They're rerouting, they're regrouping. They've gotten away from him. What did the chase? Marix going to be forced into the angle. Spinks has to be careful not to get caught here with no bolts in the gun. Reload through. Flashbang out for the peak, but dancing around the corridor, they're giving him nothing. They're not giving him an inch. They know how dangerous he is, and as soon as you poke your nose out, he's going to lay you low. Promise he's got no more utility, so Stair can just hide. Just hide and play off the bomb. 15 seconds, he's got to go now, and he knows it. Going to have to just hit a ripper of a shot here. And now he knows where the player is. Can Stair get around the corner just in time? No. He slows down. He slows up. He's going to go for the creep instead, but this does work out. Bomb plant, who cares? The round has been won, and Stare is the one to deliver it. Had to be Spinks as well, alive at the end. 41 kills now, and if Ents cannot get this map over line after such a monstrous individual performance, got to be asking questions of some of these other players. But as it stands... Heading into round 33, we're all square here on Vertigo, and we wouldn't have wanted it any other way. Hmm. Spitty's also come alive nicely. Like again, not bonkers scoreline, but considering that he had a really rough start to the game, it was nice to see him wake up. 
start to ascend here. Definitely has been a, a difference maker for them just in terms of getting the whole team online. Much more tempered pace from Ents. This aggressive A ramp hold is giving a lot of map control over to Sprout. A lot of information, but they are sticking players here, at least for a moment. So once again, Marix is going to be on a bit of an island as they start to make their inroads towards B. Can he deliver once more, Alan? Do it again. No. No, that was enough. It's done enough for the team. Bit of a commentator's curse there on the execute. Good smokes here. Left and the right side of the generator, of course. Being Who's overtime done? in the last round, they're going to commit here to the retake, but with all this utility landing, it's going to be so difficult for Sprout to get out and onto the bomb site in a good position. Massacre. A mess, a massacre, and one final round here for Ents. A slim lead as we head into the second half, but the CT side, well, it, both halves started really well for Ents. Maybe didn't finish that way, so it's really tough to read the tea leaves on this whatsoever. This could go any which way, to be quite frank. And Spinks, after the first half of overtime, has 42 kills. 42 kills. He hasn't slowed down at all. If anything, he's speeding up, it feels like. As we're getting in the latter stages, maybe the pressure is uh, something he feeds off here at Pro League. Madden, thinking about some aggression, comes into yellow. That's a CT smoke at the bottom of yellow there that allows you to play positions like this and not be scared of those terrorist one-way smokes. And he's doing a lot of work. As enter loading up A with numbers, they really want to contest this control. Saw a lot of stair trying to get aggressive on A ramp. Not going to happen this time around. Obviously, he's sort of already missed the opportunity. They still want to contest. They want to give Slacks opportunities at these shots with the big green. Oh, has tucked, but he's got support coming in the form of Sphinx, and it's Sphinx. So, of course, you're going to have to be wary, but Sphinx gets caught out in the open. They don't realize is here, but Marix is ready for it. Dia tried to play that slow, tried to play it passive, tried to be patient with it, and it's going to be all Marix all day. He finds the third. He locks them out, and at this point, Ents are going to save. They're backing away. It's 12 and a half on the money. Reminder, folks. So if you lose the first as a CT side, that money can actually spiral out of control before you know it. But Madden still wants this. Still wants something more. And these kills are meaningless if you're not actually going to go for the retake. Well, they do find a little bit. They're way too out of position. They're going to go for this now? Really? Okay. They're going to try. Let's see if Riles can shut it down. This feels like a little bit of a lukewarm commit, but Madden... Makes it possible. He needs a smoke. He doesn't have one. He doesn't have one. And that's just one of the round. Slacks just need to put down that Molotov. And that was it. They made it expensive. They made it costly. But they're still not going to be able to take the round. Late committal there. And Marix. He is so good at opening up B here on the T side. We saw it in regulation. Now we're seeing it again in overtime. Sprout are again on the terrorist side. And... Just formidable at walking up, taking the jewels, and it felt like Dehi bided his time. He let his teammate go down, baiting him a little bit, but that was the idea of the setup. But when it came to peek out, Marix is ready and waiting. Domes him, and from there, Crow in such a strong after plant position. 17 Spinks. to 17. Spinks. Can he again pull out more heroics? He has a double up. He has the secondary up now, which is kind of weird. He's been such a monster with the rifle. We'll see how he does with the AWP, and he starts it strong. Okay, there's your answer. That's why they wanted that secondary up. B's been under pressure, and this is a way to change up the formula here. Well, they're trying to bring some pressure in towards mid. They're trying to do something here. Oh, oh, is there a spot? Is the smoke faded? You got the spot through the through the bags here? Does Madden see? Apparently not. Slax punishes Hades for swinging out. Madden says they're not going to expect another person to pick up the AWP. Has an opportunity, but now Slax is posted. Missing shots are both the players, but Rouse is up close. Ready to trade. The second shot is even better, and 
Sprouts are looking revitalized here on the T side in overtime. 4v2. Spink, surely not again. Surely he can't pull this off. Put an AWP at that. He's put himself in a position. It's going to be very tricky to work with the big gun, and he is going to be dead. That one doesn't quite work as well. When he got the zoom banger. Just going to try. Try as he might. But it's not going to be a possibility. A shutdown round here as Sprout complete the comeback to find map point themselves. One more over the line. And they're going to call a timeout to make sure they know exactly what they want to do in this round. The pressure is on. 15 to 9 was the scoreline in regulation. Remember, six mm. map points for Ents. And it's been a brutal road to this point for Sprout. But finally, they get that first opportunity to get over the line. Ents faulted with their six. Can Sprouts get over the line at the first time of asking? Time for the pressure mount here. And it's feeling a little sweatier than I am after I get the cleaning bill for the entire nation of Liechtenstein. Let's see if they can mount the pressure. And should bring us through to more overtime. Stair getting aggressive here. They accelerate the pace. They want to catch them off guard, but Stair finding himself among the flames, among the explosives. He's backing off. He's right out of there. from Spinks as well. He's just gone forward. He knew he had to create for the team. He catches Spitty out by the generator, setting up utility, and now they're going to try and funnel in towards B, but D is waiting. Now he's got the second up. And while he's burning, he doesn't realize it. He does get away just before becoming a cinder. Here comes the execute. Here comes the hit. It's all on this for Ents. And Slax is trying to create something here. He's found some spice, but Hades cannot connect. And Slax finds more. He's punishing them for overlooking his spot. He's punishing them. He's given so much damage back the other way. Well, Deha will keep this to a 2v2. It's going to have to be Deha and Snappy, two players who've been relatively quiet this game. They need to deliver now. 50 seconds on the clock. That bomb will start to make its approach, start to go down. And known but they can't force him out and he's still got the angle what a peak from stair what a round what a kill all on diha 10 hp the lone man with the awp they're hoping to bait out that shot but now the bomb will be planted and diha will have to make a move and as he goes around the corner stair was posted for that the whole time they've done it they've completed the comeback 19 to 17 they drag it back through here alan what a rally out from sprout they've finally taken a map here off events at pro league oh it feels great to see and of course as we were talking about going into this series